We've created a lot of animations using acceleration. Once we specify the initial position and velocity of a marker, the acceleration tells us how the marker's velocity changes, which tells us how the marker's position changes. But in order to study real-world scenarios, we need to know where accelerations come from. In this episode, we'll learn about how accelerations come from forces. Force is one of the most important concepts in physics. You can always think of a force as one object pushing or pulling on another. For example, you might be pushing a crate across the floor. Meanwhile, friction will push backward against the crate. The crate will accelerate, or not, based on the total force being applied to it. This total force is related to the crate's acceleration through Newton's second law. This law, which has been proven over and over again throughout history, states simply that the crate's acceleration is equal to the total force divided by the crate's mass. Once we have this acceleration, we can proceed with animating the crate's motion as usual. Here's our animation code that we've worked with several times. We've now added a function at the beginning called force. This function takes the input of the name of the object we are pushing and produces the output of the total force pushing on that object. In this first case, we are pushing the crate forward with a total force of 1. The V here indicates a vector with an X component of 1 and a Y component of 0. In a few minutes, we'll add more forces in addition to this push by creating more vectors here and adding them to the total force here. We've also made a change to our accelerate function below to use this force to calculate the acceleration vector. This means we no longer specify the crate's acceleration, only the forces it experiences. Finally, we've also added a graph of the net force on the crate. Let's first try the simple case of applying a constant force to our crate to move it across the floor. A constant force produces a constant acceleration, so our animation looks exactly like what we studied before. The crate's velocity increases at a steady rate, and our position graph becomes steeper in the shape of a parabola. Now of course, a human can't just keep accelerating like this, so we'll develop a better model by considering forces that change with time. Constant forces are interesting, but with our code we can just as easily explore what happens when our force is not constant. For example, let's see what happens when our force increases linearly with time. Since this force causes a change in velocity, the velocity graph becomes steeper as the crate moves along and our position graph is sharper than it was when our force was constant. If we were to examine these graphs mathematically, we would find that the velocity matches a graph of time squared, while the position matches a graph of time cubed. The graphs become even sharper if we make the force increase as a function of time squared. Now the velocity matches a graph of time cubed, while the position matches a graph of time to the fourth power. This increase in power is an interesting trend that shows up in calculus as well. We can also add multiple forces together. Suppose we push to the right with a force of 1 and friction pushes backwards with a force of 1 half. We can add these two forces in the total force and see that our crate isn't accelerating as quickly as it did before. Now we've already noticed that this motion isn't realistic for a human. We simply can't keep increasing our speed like this. So let's suppose we use a function for force that is initially stronger to get our crate up to speed, but then levels out. The function 1 half plus e to the negative time fits this description. If we use this force in competition with our friction force, we see that our crate initially accelerates, but levels off at a steady final velocity. This means that the crate's position graph looks more like a line at the end of the motion. This is a much more realistic model of how human beings slide large objects across the floor. You have now learned how to model motion under one-dimensional forces using vPython. The activities in the description below will help you explore how various types of forces create different motion.